In this video, we're going to complete example three. We're going to solve the following equations simultaneously using the elimination method. Let's go straight into question A. We've got two equations here, and we're going to write them one above the other. So x plus 2y equals 5, and x plus y equals 3. Notice that the x's line up, the y's line up, and the constant terms line up, as well as the equal sign. Now I'm going to put a line underneath my two equations, like so, and then the subtraction symbol, which should look really familiar to you. When you learned in primary school how to add or subtract, you would normally put the two numbers, one on top of the other, the subtraction symbol and this line. So we're essentially subtracting one equation from the other equation. We'll do this one column at a time. What do you get when you go x minus x? Well, x minus x is zero, so they're going to cancel each other out. What do I get when I go 2y minus y? Well, that will give me 1y, or just y. We'll just copy the equal sign down. What do I get when I go 5 minus 3? Well, I get 2. And this has worked really well, because I already know what y equals. y equals 2. The reason we call this the elimination method is because it eliminates one of the pronumerals. In this case, it eliminated the x's here. Now that we know what y equals, we can now find x by picking either equation above. The second equation here looks to be the simplest of the two, so I'm going to use that one. x plus y equals 3. And since I know that y equals 2, I'm just going to go x plus 2 equals 3. And I can see it's quite obvious that x must equal 1. Now I'm going to make the marker's job easier. I'm going to highlight that y equals 2 and that x equals 1. Now I want to double check that this works. Now I've already used the second equation to come up with x. So I'll just look at the first equation and see if that works when y is 2 and x is 1. So x is 1, y is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus the 1 does give me 5. So I can see that my solutions are correct. We'll now move on to question B. Once again, we're going to write one equation above the other one. So we'll write 5a minus b equals 5 and then a plus b equals 7. Now I'd like to point out that I don't have to write them in the order that was written above. I could have flipped the equations around, I could have had a plus b equals 7 above. Anyway, this time I am putting the line down here, but I'm not subtracting, I'm adding. And why am I doing that? Well, I'm looking to eliminate one of the pronumerals, and what happens when I add negative b to positive b? Well, they're going to cancel each other. Sometimes you're going to subtract your equations, and sometimes you're going to add the equations. It all depends on what's going to eliminate one of those pronumerals. Anyway, we'll keep adding the columns. 5a plus a will give us 6a. And 5 plus 7 will give us 12. And this has given us a really nice equation. All we need to do now is to divide both terms by 6, cancelling the 6. 12 divided 6 is 2, so a must equal 2. Now we just need to find b. And we'll use the most simple equation, a plus b equals 7, a plus b equals 7, and we know a is 2, so that becomes 2 plus b equals 7, and it's very obvious that b must equal 5. We'll highlight these two solutions for the marker to see, and we're going to double check them. Now we've already used the equation a plus b equals 7 to find b is equal to 5, so let's test these two solutions on the first equation. 
A is 2, 5 times 2 is 10. B is 5, 10 minus 5 does equal 5. So we've checked it and it works and we can now move on to the next question. Now when we look at question C, we can see that we're faced with a bit of an issue. It, it doesn't matter whether I add or subtract, I'm not going to be able to eliminate either pronumeral. I need either my x's to have the same coefficient. You can see I've got a coefficient of 2, and here I've got a coefficient of 1. So they're not the same. This is the same issue I'm facing with the y's. 1y has a coefficient of 3, or technically negative 3, and the other one has a coefficient of 2. Now, it doesn't really matter whether the coefficient is negative or positive. It's just the number that needs to be the same. You need the y's to both have a 3, or maybe the x's to both have a 2, in order to use the elimination method. So how do I solve this problem? Well, it's not very hard. We just need to manipulate one of our equations. And I'm going to manipulate the second equation. And to help with the working out, I'm actually going to label these equations. So the first equation I'm going to call equation 1. And I'm going to use square brackets to label it. The second equation, I'm sure you've guessed it already, is going to be called equation 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 2 and I'm going to multiply the whole equation by 2. What does that mean? Well, it just means multiplying every term by 2. And we've talked about this before. You're allowed to multiply equations as long as you multiply every single term x times 2 is 2x, 2y times 2 is 4y, and finally 3 times 2 is 6. So this will equal 6. And we've actually come up with a third equation, so I'm going to label this one as well. Funnily enough, I'm going to call it equation 3. So when you look at equation 1 and equation 3, you can see that both the x's have the same coefficient of 2. So I'm going to write equation 1 above equation 3. So equation 1 is 2x minus 3y equals 20, and equation 3 is 2x plus 4y, which is equal to 6. Now, am I going to add or subtract? I'm going to subtract because I know that will eliminate the x's here. Now you might wonder why I left a bit of a gap here. Well, I kind of want to talk about what I'm doing using the labels here. I took equation 1 and I subtracted equation 3 from it. So I'm going to write here that what I'm doing is taking equation 1 and subtracting equation 3. That's what I'm doing here. Now negative 3y minus positive 4y will give me minus 7y. And 20 minus 6 will give me 14. I now divide both terms by negative 7 in order to isolate the y. And 14 divide negative 7 is negative 2. So y will equal negative 2. Now, in order to calculate x, I need to substitute y equals negative 2 into either one of my 1, 2, or even 3 equations. I think the best one for me to substitute it into is equation 2. So I'm actually going to use my labeling. I'm going to write substitute y equals negative 2 into equation 2, just to describe what I am doing. So taking equation 2, which is x plus 2y, which is equal to 3, and substituting negative 2 for y, we will get x plus 2 times y, or negative 2, equals 3. Now, 2 times negative 2 is minus 4, so I get x minus 4 equals 3. And then when I add 4, to both sides and cancel, x will equal 7. 
Now I've got my two solutions, y equals negative 2 and x equals 7. I want to highlight this for the marker, make their lives easier. I also want to double check that this is correct. Now I use the second equation to come up with x being 7. So I'm just going to check both of these using the first equation. So if x is 7, 2 times 7 is 14. If y is negative 2, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. 14 plus 6 does equal 20, so I know that my two solutions are correct. I'll now move on to question D, and I need to start with a blank slate. Once again, I'm going to do some labelling here. Now, you don't have to do the labelling, but it helps, and markers love it as well as long as you do it correctly. Now, just like question C, question D is not a straightforward question when it comes to elimination. So what am I going to do in this situation? Do I focus on making the X's have the same coefficient or maybe the Y's? Now, I think I'm going to focus on the Y's just because they have smaller numbers next to them. How am I going to do this? Um, if I multiply 2y by 3, I'm going to get 6y. And if I multiply 3y by 2, I'm also going to get 6y. So I actually have to manipulate both of these equations. So I'll start by taking equation 1. And I need the space over here on the left. And I'm going to multiply that equation by 2. I'm going to multiply every term in equation 1 by 2. What do I get when I do that? Well, 2x times 2 is 4x, and 3y times 2 is 6y, so I'm going to have minus 6y, then the equal sign, and negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So we get negative 8. And we'll call this equation 3. We've got a third equation now. Next, I'm looking at the second equation. I want the 2y to become 6y because I want two equations that have a 6y. In order to do that, I need to multiply every term by 3 so that I get 6y. Now, I'm going to write down what I'm doing here. I'm taking equation 2 and multiplying it by 3. Equation 2 multiplied by 3. What does that give me? 3 times 7x is 21x. Uh, negative 2y times 3 it gives me minus 6y, which is what I'm looking for. Then the equal sign, 3 times 3 is 9. And we will call this equation 4. Now, which equation do I write above the other? Do I write equation 3, then 4, or 4, then 3? You'll notice equation 4 seems to have larger numbers, and equation 3 actually has an extra negative. So I bet writing equation 4 above equation 3 will work better. So equation 4 is 21x minus 6y equals 9, and equation 3 goes below that, 4x minus 6y equals negative 8. Now, am I adding or subtracting? I can't be adding because negative 6y added to negative 6y makes negative 12y. It's not going to cancel them. So I need to subtract, like so. Why does subtraction work? Well, if I subtract negative 6y, that's the same as adding 6y. And negative 6y added to 6y cancels. Now 21x minus 4x will give me 17x. And 9 minus negative 8, which is the same as 9 plus 8, will give me 17. Now, I've just noticed that I forgot to do something. I forgot to write down what I was doing. I took equation 4, which is the one up above, and I subtracted equation 3, which is the one down below. So I need to write here that I'm taking equation 4 and subtracting 
equation 3. And when I did that, I got 17x is equal to 17. So I'm going to rewrite that up above. 17x equals 17. And you probably can see that x is going to equal 1. After dividing 17 to both terms, we get x is equal to 1. Now that we know that, we need to calculate y. And we pick any equation we see here. I quite like equation 2 because it's only got one negative and two positives. So I'm going to substitute x equals 1 into equation 2. Now I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write down what I'm doing. I'm substituting x equals 1 into equation 2. What do I get when I do that? Well, equation 2 is 7x, 7x minus 2y equals 3. And I know that x equals 1 or I'm substituting x equals 1 into here. So 7 times 1 minus 2y equals 3. 7 minus 2y equals 3. Now I need to subtract the 7 on both sides in order to cancel the 7. That will give me negative 2y. Sorry, that should be an equal sign. So negative 2y will equal 3 minus 7, which is negative 4. I'll rewrite that to the right, so negative 2y equals negative 4. And finally, I divide both terms by negative 2 to cancel the negative 2. And negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2, so y must equal 2. So we get two very nice solutions that I'm going to highlight, x equals 1 and y equals 2. Now I use the second equation to calculate y. So I'm going to check both of these solutions and see if they substitute correctly into the first equation. So we have 2x, x is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2, y is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 minus 6 does equal negative 4. So I can see that my two solutions are correct. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 3. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.